In this lesson, we'll take a look at how to load sounds into our apps. We'll be loading a shorter sound that's a pop, and a longer sound that'll serve as our soundtrack. I've got an orb that's rendered to the center of the display, and the intended functionality is that when I click the orb, we'll hear a popping sound. While the app is running, we'll also hear a soundtrack in the background. We'll treat short and long sounds differently. Let's go to the main.lua file, and here's the code that we have used to instantiate the orb. Actually, let's delete the event listener. It's a little premature for that. And so this should be um, rather common. Uh, we've used this lots of times. It's very simple now for us to create display objects. Okay, so let's create the pop sound. Local pop sound equals audio dot load sound. Open and close parentheses. And now a string that indicates the path to the sound. Media slash pop dot caf. The dot caf extension stands for core audio format. To create a core audio format file, you simply create an AIF file and rename it to core audio format. You can actually play an AIF on the phone. Um, it's just that these .caf files are more common, so it's a small change that I've made, but it's not gonna kill you if you use a .aif. It should be noted that this is an uncompressed file. Okay, so now let me create the event listener, orb, colon add event listener. We'll listen for the touch event and we'll call the method on the object function orb touch. And we're passing the touch object in E. Now if E dot phase double equals ended when the finger is released, Then, now we play the file, audio.play, and pass the reference in the parentheses, pop sound. So first we load the sound into memory using this reference, then we play the reference. You'll be um, probably inclined the first few times to try and actually load the path to the sound itself into audio.play, um, it needs the reference. Okay, let's save it and now relaunch. So every time I touch the orb, we hear the pop sound. It's very responsive too, especially when you load it on the device. You, could, you find you can tap it really fast and you'll get a good response. Okay, so now we need to load the soundtrack. Since the soundtrack consists of a longer file, we're not going to load the entire file into memory. Instead, we're going to stream the file off disk. To do this, we'll type local soundtrack equals audio dot load stream. Open and close. So you don't want to do this for sounds that are like interface sounds or perhaps um, gunfire or sounds that need to fire quickly. These are longer sounds. Media, this is the path to the sound, slash soundtrack.caf. And what we'll do here is we'll have the soundtrack play as soon as the app is launched. So that'll be the last line of our code. Audio dot play soundtrack. That's the reference. Save it and relaunch. So this is a short beatbox. So what you notice is that the soundtrack plays once and then stops. So we can set it to loop. To do this, we'll go to audio.play. And after soundtrack, type comma, and then use the object here to pass some properties to the playing of the soundtrack. We'll set loops equals negative one. In Corona, 
any of these uh, repeating methods, uh, such as a timer or here looping, use negative one to loop infinitely or to be invoked infinitely. Okay, so let's reload it. And now let's click the circle or the orb. Okay, so I don't have a method to stop it, so I'm going to do something crude, which is to comment out the line, save it, and then relaunch. If you wanted to stop the um, the sound from playing, well, it's just as you would expect. You do audio dot stop. So, for instance, we could set it so that after we touch the orb a certain amount of times, it'll stop the soundtrack. Uh, it'll take a little bit of work. First, we're going to need some kind of counter. Uh, so let's say C equals zero. Then every time that we have an ended event, we'll increment C. C equals C plus one. And we'll play the pop sound. Then if C, let's say, equals five, then we want to call audio.stop soundtrack. Let's start the soundtrack, save it, and relaunch. So count the pops, and we'll wait for it to loop, too. So now pop one, two, three, four, five. And it stops. So you'll want to use audio.loadsound for shorter files. Those files are immediately loaded into memory in their entirety. For longer files, you, you want to use audio.loadstream so that they can be streamed off disk because you don't want to take up precious resources in memory um, calling longer files because, well, your game's probably going to have lots of other content lots of visual content, maybe other sounds, perhaps you're running timers, and you can bog down the system by storing unnecessarily long sounds.